Good morning and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at Kelly, but it's Kelly not as you know lately for the last couple seasons. We've seen double Kelly with Witches Sabbath and I think although it's a good combination, it is subject to being punished and this card might actually give the opponent more value than what we get from it at certain times because generally they're going to want to answer things like Kelly for good with a heat wave or something of that sort. So it doesn't really help us every single time and especially if we're playing into a mirror match we actually have a bit of an advantage over the opponent being able to put in more punish cards here and they can just help us out with their own Sabbath. So we'll go through the list here and so far I've only had one loss with this deck out of eight games so I'm really excited about it and the loss was actually a bit of a throw from my end so I'd like to say undefeated but it's kind of a great area, right? Now, we'll get into the list here. We have Oneromancy because the draws on this deck are horrendous. We need Oneromancy to make sure we get the cards that we need in order to win the game. If we don't get these cards, we generally will lose the game. So, high risk, high reward with this one here. And then we have Kelly. So, she's going to be doing all the work as far as removing the widespread units and getting rid of that swarm because every turn on turn end destroy the lowest unit on the side with the most units so we want to create some contrast between what they have on their side of the board and what we have on our side of the board and put down kelly when there's enough contrast to make it work you got to be careful though because if you put down kelly first empty board kelly will actually destroy herself so you know you want to make sure that they have units in play and it's more than what we have here now with 10.1 spear tip got an indirect buff because of the rework to old spear tip asleep so with this one here now we have a second card in the deck with a counter so after three turns summon old spear tip from deck to the row and increase the base power by six and banish the self here so this is going to be banished and then the base power from this is going to turn into 18. now this card ultimately if it gets injured or or hit and damaged it's going to just banish itself and summon this but at least we still get the 12 at least we still get the deck thin and i think this combination is really good i decided to go for a more cost effective way in another win condition instead of going for witch's sabbath and that was just to spice up this end here and i think osro plays extremely well into this type of deck because we have the ability now to go and get a crazy 19 point Osril for 8 provisions so I didn't want to let that go and I didn't want to have to leave it to risk to bring back this with the with the Witch's Sabbath and then maybe they've used a Xavier or Squirrel or something like that and punished our big unit and maybe they heat wave the Kelly so that was the reasoning behind it all here Karat the Heat Wave, another card that just makes a lot of sense in the meta right now. Everybody's playing Greedy, and the other version of Kelly doesn't have that dedicated Tall Punish or Artifact Removal. So I feel more comfortable playing this way, and you're going to see Karathi in my Kelly decks. And moving on to Siri Dash here, this is ultimately going to help us abuse the coin quite well in round one. We can put this down, we can give it Crystal Skull or we can hide it behind a defender, and after four allied turns, we're going to be able to draw a card and flip the coin and put the opponent in a position where they're losing on even. So extremely valuable play, and this card helps make this deck what it is, so I wouldn't be substituting this anytime soon. And we need a defender because we're playing extremely greedy, extremely high risk. We got to put something up. We got to put up a wall, and that's exactly what the cave troll is doing here. It's my second favorite defender in the game to Donamir, but uh, four armors hard to get through. Seven base powers, nice and strong. I like it quite a bit. It helps us get to Sabbath easier as well for things like the Witch Apprentice. So that's a good, good point slam too, even though it's just the defender. And Imler's Wrath is another extended reach here. We have. A really big ceiling of upwards of 20 points if we go and boost things up because you know this can eat through anything pretty much so if we're playing into Colgrim matchups we're playing into Kelly matchups we're playing into Geddeneth matchups this is gonna see phenomenal value here it just makes sense to have it and that's pretty well it we got the two tall punishes we have Nithral in here as well Nithral is gonna be helping us chisel things down to sort of plan when we're going to get the Kelly removals because we can try to ping things down and remove their engines opposed to just removing the lowest base power card that's not doing anything. So really good there. 
and it's really easy to keep dominance so we should just be damaging by two every single turn that we play this here we talked about osril we'll move on to the beast at the end of the turn if it, this unit's not the unit with the highest power in the battlefield boost self by two so every single turn that this card is on the board it's going to be boosting itself by two because there's no reason with a deck like this that goes this tall that the beast should not be the tallest unit and if that wasn't enough we have another engine that's here to help do the same thing this Aparian Phantom is going to be boosting itself by one at the end of every turn and it has an order of three when we intend on using it now if we use the order then of course the boost is going to stop so we have to plan a perfect time usually Aparian Phantom combined with Nithral is a good five point removal reach so I always kind of tend to look for something like that when I'm playing it I used to have Parasite in the old one, the new one doesn't allow it, there's just not enough provisions. I tried so hard to make it fit, but I felt like everything in our top end had to stay. So Alzer's Thunder's a little bit more of a reach. We got some damage here if we need to take out something important. There was a consideration here to dump one of the Witch's Apprentices to put back in the Parasite and find something else to put in the Bronze End that was a unit. I didn't know if I wanted to take that, but that's also something. You could take out one Apprentice. Put in Parasite, maybe take um, a 4P, like an Indriga Warrior or something, so you could do a same round, consume Osril. But I think it's just fine the way it is. We have a bit more control with the Dimeridian Bomb and the Hideous Feast. I like this card because it doesn't remove a unit, so it keeps that board contrast, but it also helps buff up things that they might try to take out, like the Siri, the Kelly, the Phantom, the Nithral, etc. So, made a lot of sense there. Now, the spores, I felt like it was necessary to have this here because we can use this as a tall punish for something like a Sunset Wanderer or whatnot. We don't have to necessarily dedicate this to a tall punish. This could just be like any important card we need to remove. So, again, we have like really good mid, really good tall, and just cheap reset. And I think that's not bad to have here at all. And... Pact is just another thing we have here. We don't have to worry about our placement of Pact because we don't have to recycle units. The only thing that we don't want to Pact in the entire deck is pretty much the Spear Tip. However, if we're playing into a Kelly Mirror, you don't want to you don't want to Pact anything really. You, you want to make sure that it has Veil before you Pact it, otherwise we might lose that and it could cost us the game. We have a Peller for Purify. If something of ours somehow gets locked if we didn't put Veil on it, or if we have to get around the Defender, it makes a big difference there. And I see a lot of people going in with Xavier. I think that Squirrel is just fine because we have the Heat Wave to banish one thing for good. And if there's a second thing we need to get rid of, then we can just go use the Squirrel and we can play that there. But generally, you're going to be mulliganing back a lot of these Bronze End units unless we absolutely need them for the matchup. But that's pretty much it here. I have some really intense games today. Every single match that I play with this deck feels like a tournament setting. It just feels like there's so much pressure. And I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it. And if you enjoy the content today, don't forget to drop a sub on the channel. We're nearing 4K and we're closing in. So let's make it happen. Let's get into the games here. Alright, so moving on to the first game. We have Nilfgaard. And it's going to be double cross here. So we play this a little bit different, obviously, in Double Kelly. We want to actually preserve the Kelly because we get that one shot with it. So I don't think that we're going to be taking it round one, but I still want a hand that we can play pretty thoroughly here. I'm burning the midnight oil today. It's like 11 p.m. I've been procrastinating the video for today just because it was a lazy Sunday for me. Expecting a busy week. So I just took the time in the afternoon, do a couple errands around the place, play a couple other games for a bit. So... We're going to be doing a lot of the same thing here, putting down the defender on the first turn, looking for something like the Siri on the second turn. So it's a pretty repetitive process. If you enjoy playing that way, it's going to be pretty comfortable for you. I don't think we have to go and boost Siri here just because they have no way of getting around the defender just yet. Contained. 
That changes a lot because this matchup has lots of ways to kill the Siri, right? If we put the Crystal Skull, they might use Yen, they could use Vincent, there's a lot of different things they could use, Velgaforts. So I'm trusting that they don't have a lock or a coded weapons or assassination. I just don't want to give them better value for Tall Punish, so I think they're looking for something here. What I love about this deck right now, compared to before, is the Spear Tip counter. Because if you can get these things online at the same time, then the opponent has a very difficult time choosing which they'd rather deal with. Is it going to be the series? Is it going to be the old spear tip of sleep? So it creates some problems there. And for those of you guys who came out last night, what would have been two nights ago by now, but to the collab stream that I did on Twitch, appreciate the support. I did post some of the deck guide summary that we did in a video yesterday so if you haven't had a chance to check that one out go show some love there and uh, I look forward to doing more collabs with people Rim takes fly, eh? yeah that's just a lot of points here it's gonna be very difficult for them to get ahead I think that they likely pass here but if they don't then we probably will So we sort of set out what we're looking to do in this round. We took the win on even. Now we can go into round two and play it like it's a round three. And... <laughs> the wavelength coming out of my mic looks quieter than normal, so I'm hoping that when I am finished this, it'll be beefy enough, otherwise we'll just have to crank it up. I'm going to be switching back to my new mic soon. I still have it, it just, for the last month or so I haven't been using it. And I mentioned that it was so heavy it broke the stand. Well, I haven't found a stand that I like that fits the desk shape and um, the budget. Some of these are way overpriced. So I'm still holding out for something good. I'll get that a couple new cables and we should be back online with that one there. I actually like the sound of it a lot more. I just didn't like the placement of it. It needs to be right in front of me or it doesn't work. And it was off to the side. I had to lean into it and it was just not really fun. So we'll slam down some points here. We have no reason not to, right? We want to play just tall and lean. We don't want to have too many units on the board here. Yeah, I don't think we care too much about that. That's a really good removal there. So, I'm cramming down the beast because I'm thinking, okay, it's possible we could just go and put Kelly on a range row. If they don't play into it, that's fine. It's also possible that we get a couple tall removals and maybe we don't want to play this round. And it's also possible that we just tempo pass. So, a couple different options here. But that's kind of what we want here. The board starting to get that contrast. So, we could talk Kelly online shortly. 
kind of want to get rid of the potential bonded that they have. They don't have Sabbath, so I'm not too worried about the pig just yet. If you guys hear any swearing or yelling in the background, um, buddy of mine's in another room in my house, uh, just um, playing Call of Duty, and uh, I guess they're losing. So two pigs is not bad. Kelly comes online here, it feels pretty confident. They can't lock it, but if they're going to remove it, that's okay. I think we have to just go for it here and see if it stands. And we have lots of specials we could play too. Okay. I don't think I mind burning our own token to remove that here. Yeah. That just gets out of hand if we leave it. You could also pack and just take it later though. You know what I mean? It's pretty much the same thing. I don't think there's any catching up from that because we have the one special and that's about it. What they really need here is all punish. It's probably a really good thing that we took that first. Could you imagine? And we just packed here. Hope for the best. We don't put it on one of the tall ones just in case. Yeah. That should just be fine. That will be the best treason I've seen in a year. That we just take it here. And normally I think the Nilfgaard matchup is pretty difficult. But we managed to get out of that one pretty comfortably. And the second game here we have Monsters, Fruits of Yizgif. Honestly, man, I've been having so much fun playing Fruits. My Yaga decks are always so much fun for me to play. And I genuinely believe that they're pretty good. Like, when I, when I post Yaga, I'm not just pretending like, oh, this is the next thing. Like, I actually love playing the card. Good or bad, it's like one of my top. It's got to be in the top 10 monsters cards for me. I, do not mix words. I don't think we care too much about the lock. Like, it's never a good thing, but we never. Like, I don't want to play into like a dive if we put the skull on Siri first turn or even the Nithral we value engines quite a bit here so something like the beast pays off and then it allows us to get down a pig And I'm thinking that we should just be able to run away here shortly, but I gotta respect that too, don't I? Otherwise they keep multiplying every turn. It's nuts. Self eaters are actually such a good card. And Ciri's right where she needs to be here. We're in the position where we're gonna win on even if they pass. Otherwise, I think we play one pig, see how it goes. I don't know if we have to put both.
it sucks because I like to be able to play the pig and then have them play. Okay, that's pretty good. Can't say I love their two or their one pig, but we could put down the second one. I just don't think they play into this. We would pretty much win the game if they if they did. Okay, we're getting the six points per turn, but that puts us up to 40. Actually, yeah. That puts uh, 40. Okay, yeah, yeah, we don't, we need to play a card here. It's a tough matchup because I really want to take the round one because I know the tempo that they have going into like round two, three. Especially if they have round control. I'm pretty sure what I ended up doing is taking Kiltelis here. Wrath is fine too. I think Wrath would have been fine. But I, I actually had a very strong feeling that... Kelly in this matchup's not as good as you think. With the fruit. We have a pretty good Wrath and Spores too, and we can catch them slipping if we let them get those points, and then... Okay. So... We could tie here. We tie here, but we have card advantage. So it's a very unique situation that works out quite well. And then we just go into a sudden death with better cards, hopefully. Heatwave is going to be really good here. Wrath is going to be pretty good here. The problem that we have is getting units, so I like to see Onero. Spear tip would be incredible. <laughs> you like how I have no units, but then I mulligan back Peller. I'm feeling pretty confident about our choice of being able to take... Well, Defender's good, too. And this is a reason, like I was telling you, why Kelly wouldn't be so good here, right? Because they would just be able to keep getting it back. So if we're going to win, it's because we have more cards than them. Not much else than that. They have scary point potential here in this short round. We have to put the timer online. Otherwise, we're in trouble here. And if Spear Tip goes, we have to hope that they don't have something to answer the cave troll. Otherwise, we're losing there too. It's kind of scary here. Touch your hair on my head Look at this. Then. Okay, we get crazy reach with Spear Tip end of turn. We're going to get a crazy wrath. That's a perfect reset. I can't say I love... Like taking a pact here, it's kind of scary because I end up doing it. Yeah, if I was to go back, I probably wouldn't do that because they could have like a crazy tall punish here and we play into it. But I guess we still would have won either way. She who knows goes down, it's a little late for that. We gotta make the points here. That might have actually just saved us. And leader just goes for points. Crank it on the 10. 
Yeah, so that actually saved us here. It's a good thing we actually took it, yeah, thinking back on it. Going into the third game, we got Tactical Decision by Nilfgaard. So you know the drill here. Spear Tip goes back. Also, round one goes back. Hands pretty good. I don't know about Sporus in round one. I think we want that late game. And just so you guys know too, I'll mention it here. I don't know if you'll hear it at this point in the video, but I, uh, I'm going to be doing some other factions other than monsters for probably the rest of the week. So this will be the last monsters video for a little while, just because getting kind of worn out of monsters did the Kashi video did a frost video recently did this one here there's another one I'm thinking of I just can't remember which one it is this feels like a lot of monsters lately a lot of the same card set I'm also going to be not, uh, taking a little break from Syndicate. I did three or four Syndicate videos in the last week. I'm thinking about looking at Northern Realms a bit more. Something that we haven't done. I did Mages recently. And I did Witchers recently, but there's, there's definitely other things we can do. And uh, I'm thinking about getting some Nilfgaard, but more ethical, because I like to play Fun Guard, not Toxic. You know, stuff like this that we're playing against doesn't interest me a whole lot. I had fun playing Colgrim that one time when it was uh, far from meta. But now when everybody plays it, it just doesn't have the same appeal. But getting back into the game here, it's... It's kind of interesting. They bring out the Kelly round one. They bring out the Reance round one. I don't know if we care about Kelly being here round one. I think we just... I think we just control the Kelly there. Let it take out what we want it to take out. But them bringing out Kelly and us having as many specials as we do in hand makes it uh, pretty comfortable. And we could pack, like I said, whatever we want except for the spear tip because we don't care. We're not doing the whole double Kelly thing. And so far it's working out pretty well. These games are back to back. It's like there was no cuts in between them. Just the, the loading screens, basically. <laughs> so they roll that, we can roll it right back. Feels wrong not to. Maybe just hit the back row, split it up a little bit. We don't want to put the front to a one. And that should be the pass there, because they don't want to bring out Sunset. So, it was a little bit expensive, not because we wanted it to be. But they really did a number on us here. Brought out Kelly, they took Spear Tip, like we lost like half the points in the deck now we gotta try and figure something out for round two so this is me looking at the deck saying all right there's like nothing left How do you expect, like, a Heatwave, Yen, Iroquax? I decide to go for the bleed here because we have three engines in hand and a bunch of specials. So... I'm just hoping that we get uh, 
the engines up and running quickly and then that might buy us a card or two out of them at least maybe get the sunset maybe get the leader out of the way something like that they opt for cantarella it's a pretty good cantarella also helps us set up the osril too if we need to be a 10 point osril And I just gotta start cranking some boosts here, because we need Sabbath badly. And I think that's the only way we get the round, or potentially get the win, because the five points a turn are really hard to deal with. And it keeps climbing here. We have to play tall and greedy. I don't want to boost Beast, obviously, because that's going to be boosting on its own. So we're taking away value from it if we start throwing potions on it and stuff. I shall do as you I haven't seen enough, but we're getting close. What's nice too is if they do play that spear tip, then we we would have obviously had uh, the ability to take it down with the wrath shortly. They shuffle it back in deck, which is a little bit worrisome here. So I pass thinking that we might be able to get the cards out of them. It's just like those things you never expect. And the Vilgeforts. So, there can't be any more Tell Punish. Like, that is just so much. So, we need Cave Troll. It's actually a win con here. I think Sporus might be bad. I don't think that it's going to be Colgrim. It doesn't feel Colgrim to me. It just feels... Like some kind of control deck, or I, you know what I mean. Like just deck manipulation, thin control. Like it's a bit of everything, I guess. Okay, that's a pretty good removal. We have to deal with the 18 point spear tip, the 10 point bear, and then all the other cards they have in hand. Okay, that's not too bad. I don't think we ever take Purify here first, because then they get access to another unit and behind the defender. So I think we let them stack it here, and then we might actually Purify it, because uh, we need those points. Ticking four times uh, kind of scary. Living souls in your wake.
Deck check here, we're doing pretty good because we know what one of the cards is and that's already dealt with. So I'm just basically not even factoring in those points. I'm taking this here because I trust that there's not another tall punish. Oh yeah, they put it back. I actually missed that when I was playing. But either way, it doesn't matter here. We're up by one point, they play the 18, we take the heat wave, it's done. And that was just like super control. There was so much removal. In and moving on to the next one, we have Pincer Maneuver by Northern Realms. And off the bat, I'm thinking that this one here is going to be Mages. I don't know if I want Kelly round one. I kind of want to control them establishing the engines, but I want to save Kelly when they spawn a lots of them um, in later rounds. So I'm deciding here, just go with the engines, go with the point slams. We have access to take down a couple things here. Reach with Feast and Aperion, and then we have the Nithral, and then we have the Heat Wave as well. I'm curious if I'm the only one right now trying to play single Kelly. I've, in the last two months, it feels like I haven't ran into a single, single Kelly matchup, if that makes sense. But so far, we're doing pretty good, so. So when I see Defender come down first turn, I'm thinking Letitia second turn. That's probably them drawing into it. This would have been a pretty good Kelly round, to, to be honest. Like, we have already crazy board contrast. There are things in the universe of which even the sages have not read. So it's just mages. We don't get exactly what we're looking for with the damage here because we want to make sure it's boosted before we use it. Otherwise, we're losing turn like points. But it's very slow if we take a pact or something. So it feels like we ought to just use leader and boost it. And I'm not too concerned yet about that defender. We can always heat wave through that and get to whatever else afterwards. But now it looks like we kind of have to do something here because we don't want to have them bonded. So a phantom's really good reach, right? We could potentially wait a turn, but I think we just take that before they boost it with the skull. And even if it shuts off our engine here, it's sort of a damage control round that we have going on. Yes, nothing quite like it. Okay. The Adarin gets pretty difficult. But the good thing here is I can actually remove both of them in one play. We take that and then we just take the feast. But there's no sense in doing it just yet because we start losing points. So if I take this first, gives us dominance back, which then removes the two. We have to really respect those engines. I've lost games because those engines have been placed in round two and I didn't have answers to it. So I'm pretty familiar with this uh, matchup because it was so popular a few months back. Uh, 
I don't know if we can get rid of all of them here. We can get rid of one and jam pig. These one copies aren't the problem. Easy there. And I think we have to take this, otherwise we might not get it. It might provoke them into passing without clicking as well, so it works out pretty well. Ah, uh, I remember this matchup. Okay, so I wasn't paying attention to the 15 in the front row there. And I think I might have done this twice, because uh, you sort of just forget sometimes, especially with the the shield on it, it doesn't sit in the forefront of my focus, like... Yeah, see it goes up to 18, but we don't have... See, I do it again. I'm glad that it didn't cost us, but it's just one of those things, if you want to make sure you're doing it right, always just do dominance check before using order every single turn with Nithral. But here, the, the lead is too significant. They go all in trying to force this situation. We can just pass here and still win the round. So, yeah, we lost a couple points. But uh, we have a pretty big advantage here. The only thing is that I don't know how I'd like to play into this. It all depends on how we top deck. Because they're a card down right now, if I do pass on this, they get the card back, but they won't play, I don't think. It would be kind of expensive for them to play to get a couple points of carryover, so surely we predict that. Now we can go on to round three with the card advantage, or more or less last say and just try and jam down Kelly so far we pull into it here and we have mainly specials so I'm feeling pretty good about that I know the deck that they're running doesn't have much if any control so we did miss some golds but I don't know if it matters here And this is a heat wave check, but I honestly don't think they have one. Yeah, and we can just keep just jamming swallows here and just taking out these engines four points per turn and I, I think that the majority of what they're going to be playing within this deck is going to be units the day is nigh. that's not too big of a deal here we can either take a boost or we could damage that i don't mind using something small like that and they just ran out of options that was it they couldn't make the point spread Feels good, I love those kind of wins. Moving on to the last game of the day here, we have another Northern Realms matchup. This one's Stockpile. And first round hand's great. Spores, I don't think it's gonna be great unless they have maybe Amphibious. Squirrel could be okay for Amphibious, but because we're on blue coin, I don't know if I want Squirrel. If we can flip the coin, then Squirrel's not bad. I don't think Peller's too necessary here so I really don't think that they have heat wave I like to get Siri down when I'm confident early because it makes it more difficult for them to bounce back And then we can just follow that up with maybe an engine of some sort. The two timers is perfect for me. I hope the 
They lock that. It's funny, because every time we mulligan back the purify, we need it. I've been noticing this so much lately. Happened to me a couple times yesterday when I was playing games. I don't think it's all too important. It's not like if that doesn't work, we lose. Do not test my patience. I kind of don't want them to have another leader charge. I think that that's kind of crazy. So I'll go ahead and handle that now because four is actually quite a bit for this leader. If they jam the roll with engines, then something might happen here. Surely we do pull into Purify. I actually forgot about that, but that is really good to see. And I believe they're trapped. Locks out of the way. That's like their one of their one control answers, maybe with exception to like uh, boiling oil and stuff like that. If they're playing Siege with cooldown. So they just opt for the boiling here. But the point contrast is too steep. And we could probably just pass on them here. But I think it's probably just more important to win on even than to potentially get past. I don't really want to give them the round. I'd rather just see the scenario when we want to see it and deal with things accordingly here. Pretty good hand for round two. I think Squirrel can go away. Don't want too many units, but Oswald's pretty good. And that's not bad. We have a few turns of specials in between. And we should be good to get Kelly online this turn, assuming they play a Siege engine, right? Because then it'll spawn the third one. Hensalt's great. Hensalt's actually really good because it, it literally gives us now four units on the board. So we can even go and kill that and then just take out Hensalt here. And I think that's great. I don't go all in with Leader because I don't think that they have a way of getting it. And I'm pretty sure the game ends very shortly here. Appreciate you guys coming out. I'm going to be back with another deck guide tomorrow. If you have any suggestions for later this week, drop them in the comments. And I'll definitely try and get some of them. We'll see you then.